since 1944. As usual for our series of history pills, we will start with a picture. In the picture, we can notice American troops landing on the coastline of Normandy. This picture was taken on the 6th of June 1944 during the so-called D-Day. The day in which Allied troops invaded Normandy with what will result being the largest seaborne invasion in history. In this video, however, we are not going to talk about the invasion of Normandy, secretly nicknamed Overload Operation. We will be talking, instead, about the unusual incident that happened to a British professor a few months before the invasion, in London. We are in England, in the spring of 1944. The highest ranking member of British and US Army are planning a secret operation called Operation Overload. No one outside of these high ranks knows what is going on, when is going to happen, nor where is going to happen. Millions of people are getting ready for an operation of which they personally know nothing about. Let's begin with our story. It's 1944. Information was spread through newspapers. Newspapers that during World War II were at their most popular. And thanks to newspapers, people throughout Britain could find out what was happening in the pots of the world and where their troops were engaged in the fight against Germany. Alongside with news, nearly all newspapers had crossword puzzles in them. They became very popular as they helped fill in the hours spent in the air raid shelters, waiting for trains, or simply for enjoying a bit of free time. It's in this scenario that, in the spring of 1944, the Daily Telegraph starts publishing in their crosswords vital code names that had been adopted to hide the mightiest seaborne assault of all time. Code names that suddenly, for some sort of coincidence, appeared in the crosswords altogether. In a single edition of the newspaper, three names appeared. Juno, Sword, and Gold. All three were solutions to different clues. Coincidentally enough, Gold and Sword were the code names chosen to name the two beaches where British were to land, while Juno, being the code name chosen to indicate the Canadian's landing beach. MI5, that stands for Military Intelligence, Section 5, that is, Britain's counter-espionage services, got alarmed. However, being these, Three common words, they branded the incident as a simple coincidence. A few editions later, the answer to one clue turned out being Utah, and another answer to a clue was Omaha. Both, the code names chosen for the tragically famous beaches where thousands of US troops landed in June and lost their lives. Another answer that appeared in that month's crossword was Mulberry. This was the name of the floating harbor that was to be towed across the channel to accommodate the supply ships of the invasion force. Neptune, another answer, referred to the code name for the naval support for the operation. Perhaps, the most suspicious was a clue about a bigwig, to which the answer was Overlord. This was the code name given for the entire operation. At this point, MI5 could not believe in a coincidence anymore. Two officers were sent to arrest a man called Leonard Daw. He was a high school director and a crosswords compiler for the Daily Telegraph. The man was interrogated intensively and threatened to be shot for treason, as the agents believed he was sending secret messages to the Germans. The man was later released, with no charges, as it appeared being a mere coincidence. Recently, however, in an interestingly twist of history, many of his ex-students declared that they had helped on several occasions filling these crosswords. It turned out that many students, living near a US camp outside London, heard these words daily and were passively influenced in suggesting these words. Do you know other hidden pieces of history? Share them in the comments. Smash the like button and remember to subscribe to the channel for more video like this.